Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the other mechanism for radical bromination, the one that goes uh, proceeds without a radical initiator, but ha is done with uh, UV radiation. This reaction is still going to have an initiation step, but without a, an explicit radical initiator, the initiation step is going to involve the n bromo succinimate itself. And um, need a regular arrow, and I want to put some some UV or radiation here because enbromos sentiment doesn't just doesn't do this on its own. It needs needs a little bit of energy input for this to happen. And. Under UV irradiation of n succinamide, you can get a homolytic cleavage of this nitrogen bromine bond. And so you get the succinamyl radical and the bromine radical. And in the previous video, I talked about a mechanism using the succinamyl radical to uh, abstract hydrogens from cyclohexene and generate cyclohexanal radical. And that can go on and happen. Uh, but as it turns out, bromine radical is actually better at this. The succinamyl radical is resonance stabilized. Um, and so here's what happens. Okay. <clears throat> and thus begins the propagation steps. And the propagation steps in here are going to involve something a little bit weird, so be on the lookout for it. Okay. Uh, first thing is actually pretty normal. Hydrogen abstraction from the cyclohexene. We generate the cyclohexene radical. And we generate hydrogen bromide. Okay. The problem is... Uh, hydrogen bromide is not one of the products of this reaction. We do not generate acid. Uh, we generate succinamide. The hydrogen actually needs to end up on the nitrogen of succinamide. So the next propagation step actually involves a non-radical reaction of n bromo succinamide. And hydrogen bromide. Uh, and this actually has a couple of steps to it, uh, a proton transfer and a nucleophilic attack, uh, or at least is, is what is uh, hypothesized. I'm not going to show that because it's not 100%. I'm personally not 100% clear on the mechanism of this exchange, but the exchange that occurs is, is a hydrogen for a bromine, but not by a radical pathway. The only thing I can tell you is that this is a, some kind of ionic mechanism. And now we generate Br2, but we're generating a small amount of Br2 in a condition in, in conditions that are otherwise favorable for radicals. Make this bond a little longer. I like long bonds for my uh, radical mechanism steps. And the other arrow. There we go. Nope. I want my arrow to look like this, like this, and like that. Action arrow. And so we can generate uh, uh, cyclohexene, has bromine on it, and we generate our bromine radical which then can go back into the first propagation step. So this uh, mechanism is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and in fact, if you watch the last video on the mechanism with the radical initiator, in all likelihood, both of these react, both these mechanisms are going on at the same time. Uh, one thing that I can tell you that offers a clear uh, indicator of the presence of bromine is that bromine is orange. Uh, so the reaction will turn orange. 
uh, if you see bromine. And having done the version with the radical initiator, I do see a little bit of orange forming. So both of these mechanisms might actually be going on at the same time. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about uh, the application of this to another resonance stabilized system. And then we'll talk about, in a final video on this reaction, how to predict the products of this reaction. Thank you for watching.